For many, many people who are non-technical and don't code, but have an idea for a company they want to build, the journey usually stops there. It's surprising that this is the case because when someone starts a company, there's no way they can run every part of the business. Rarely does a single person know how to code, lead a sales team, manage accounting, review legal documents, and so on. Building a company and bringing it to life is a team sport. And like with any team, leaders come in all different shapes and sizes. Take it from me, I don't code. I'm non-technical by the classic definition of not knowing how to code. And I co-founded Wilbur Labs, a startup studio that builds several technology companies every year. I say classic definition because we think that being technical is not limited to just writing software. To us at Wilbur Labs, being technical means that the leader can be involved in the guts of the business at the lowest levels possible. And for me, it means working intimately with product, engineering, and whatever core functions necessary to drive the business at the highest and lowest levels. You may be non-technical from the classic definition of not coding as well, but that doesn't mean you can't get technical or get technical enough to be an effective founder, leader, and scale your startup. Over the years, several non-technical co-founders have asked me for advice on how they should approach building their software company. The first thing I tell them is that if you aren't coding the software, it likely means you need to be all the more involved on the product side, down to the lowest levels of detail, and partner closely with engineering. You can't hire an engineering team, give them some high-level vision, throw a brick over the fence, and expect them to build whatever you have in mind. Given you won't be coding the product, as the de facto product leader, your job is to scope the product, articulate all the necessary product requirements, define clear priorities, and work with engineering to understand what is and isn't possible as you do so. You may have zero product management experience, but that's okay. Effective product management is as much about understanding the problem you're solving for as it is about understanding product more generally. As the company's founder, your biggest initial role is understanding the problem you're setting out to solve and ensuring that the solution that you're building solves it in a big way. You are arguably the best person to lead the product side initially for that reason. And you can achieve this without writing a single line of code. Founders who code do have one less hurdle. They can build the first iteration of the product by themselves, while founders who don't code will likely need to hire engineering resources to do so. That can lead to some initial additional expense by comparison. But on the flip side, it is a very hireable role, and there are no shortage of options to find someone to build what you need. Whether full-time or contract, if you prioritize finding someone with relevant domain expertise and strong referrals, you'll be in good shape and able to focus more on the other areas of the business. At the end of the day, most companies die by building something customers don't want or not having effective distribution strategies to actually acquire customers, not because the founder couldn't code. In fact, many of the most successful founders don't know how to code. Even amongst technical founders, many didn't code at the outset of their companies, and even more don't code when their companies scale. There is no single formula to what makes a great founder great, and not knowing how to code is no exception.